The RX crossover is Lexus's best-selling model. Just shy of 101,000 of them were delivered in the U.S. last year, and ever since it first went on sale back in 1998, it has been a huge success. Now, when it's time to update a Keystone product like this, automakers are often overly conservative, especially Toyota. But with their new RX, I don't think the design team got the memo. In one generation, this crossover styling has gone from ordinary to outrageous. Grafted on is the brand's signature spindle grille, along with more hard lines than a blueprint. Accordingly, the RX resembles a piece of sheet metal origami rendered in a drivable scale. This utility vehicle has been comprehensively reworked for 2016, and as you can see, styling is the big news. Even though it shares the same platform as its predecessor, you'd never know it. This particular RX 450H, that's the hybrid variant, looks even more aggressive thanks to the optional F Sport package, which graces it with a mesh grille and special 20-inch wheels. There's also all-wheel drive and adaptive suspension. F-Sport trim is supposed to bridge the gulf between Lexus's mainline models and its enthusiast-focused F-products, but can a hybrid really be a viable performance offering? Sure, the Acura NSX, for instance, features an electrified drivetrain, but it's a supercar and turbocharged, plus it sits lower to the ground than mulch in a garden. Oh yeah, and it's not a crossover. Anyway, behind the RX 450H's garish grille, we find a 3.5-liter Atkinson Cycle V6, which doesn't sound like it promises very much performance, on the surface at least. But it's augmented by a 37-kilowatt nickel-metal hydride battery pack and three separate electric motors, two up front and one round back that's part of the all-wheel drive system. Total output measures 308 horses and 247 pound-feet of torque, Clearly, F-Sport is more about look and feel than speed and handling. If you remember, the MKX I tested a couple months back had a twin turbocharged V6 with 380 pound-feet of torque on tap. It was a rocket. While quick, this gets left in the dust by that hot rod Lincoln. The RX 450H may lack brute force, but the trade-off for this is striking efficiency. It can stretch a gallon of dinosaur juice 30 miles in urban driving, taken on a road trip, and you can expect 28 mpg, a figure I beat by a few tenths without even trying, which is damn impressive. And so is the RX's interior. You know, I've been critical of various Lexus cabins in the past, notably the company's RC Coupe range. I find them to be just too busy and weird looking for my taste. However, this one strikes a great balance between sort of that Japanese futurism and more traditional luxury cues. I prefer the Lincoln MKX's interior design with its simpler shapes and gentle curves, but this feels sturdier and the switchgear is of noticeably higher quality, ditto for some of the materials. The leather, for instance, is absolutely sumptuous and assembly quality is faultless. Even the back seat is plenty spacious for life-sized adults. A colorful 12.3-inch screen dominates the cabin of this test model, perched atop the dashboard like some digital macaw. It's controlled by Lexus's remote touch interface, which is kind of like a computer mouse. It feels a little weird to use a pointing device while driving, but strong haptic feedback through the little control nub here does help guide the cursor where you want it to go, but still, this is a pretty cluttered interface, and at times, the cursor can jump around unexpectedly, so overall, I find that Audi's latest MMI system does have a slight edge over this. Underway, what's immediately obvious about the Lexus RX 450H's interior is its overwhelming silence. At all speeds, this cabin remains hushed, something that makes long-distance drives quite a relaxing experience. However, I'm not a fan of these front seats. They're too hard for me, and the lower cushion seems oddly shaped. On a two-hour drive the other day, I was squirming around less than halfway to my destination. 
In keeping with its refinement, this vehicle's ride is always smooth. Now, it's got a drive mode selector down here on the center console that allows you to change the throttle input mapping and, of course, the way the suspension responds. But even in Sport S and Sport S Plus modes, which are the highest settings, the RX still glides over poor quality pavement. I found myself just leaving it in normal mode, which is fine since the difference between these settings is not very noticeable, except eco mode, which kills all the fun. Acceleration from this vehicle's hybrid drivetrain is more than adequate. It'll scoot right along when pushed hard, probably thanks to abundant electric torque. More oomph is not needed, but it might be nice. The RX's steering is unremarkable, feeling light and pretty disconnected from the road, but its binders are another story entirely. See, the pedal feels great underfoot, and the transition from regenerative to friction braking is seamless, and really, I can't even tell when it happens. It's that good. So there you go. That's a quick spin in the 2016 Lexus RX 450H, but now for the all-important issue of pricing. You can get an entry-level front-wheel drive hybrid variant for less than $54,000, but if you option it up with things like that F-Sport package, the big navigation screen, and some of its available driver assistance features, you can pay a lot more. And out the door, this one right here cost us $60,215, which really isn't too bad. At that price, I'd keep the quiet, well-built interior, impressive fuel efficiency, and roomy back bench. Oh, plus its reputation for long-term quality. But the remote touch interface didn't win me over, nor did the front seats or somewhat lackluster dynamics. And then there's the styling. What do you think of this vehicle's looks? Has Lexus gone too far? I've got to say, after spending about a week in the RX, its appearance really has grown on me, though I do still find it a little bit too aggressive. But leave us a comment. I'd love to read it. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the Autoguide.com YouTube channel to get all of our latest features and vehicle reviews. <laughs> it's a gentleman's clap. This is, a, this is how you professionally clap. You take your, your index and your middle fingers, you apply them to the palm in this area. You hear that? It cracks like gunshot. Like they're probably going to call the police over there so loud.